All right, what's going on? Rizzo from Ophidian Tactical, and let's talk about um, what do you do first time going on when it's time to get your gun. Uh, so you made the decision uh, to get your gun, you want to decide what kind of gun um, is good for you. Uh, well, you want to go to the, to the uh, range a lot, maybe, and just fire a couple of guns and kind of see what fits for you. I always recommend what people um, buy the biggest gun uh, that you can shoot, that you can conceal comfortably. Um, so most people are not going to go out and buy something, a big uh, five inch full size. Um, next thing is you don't go out and spend all your money trying to get a great gun, a expensive gun off the jump. Uh, an expensive gun is not going to make you shoot better <laughs> from the jump, so just buying a gun because it costs a lot. So you don't have to spend a thousand dollars. Um, $1,500, some people may spend two, three, four grand on a gun. It doesn't need to be your first gun. Um, I always recommend uh, Glock 19. Glock 19 is a great um, starter uh, gun. It's a nice, perfect size. It's a Glock, so it's, it's pretty reliable. It'll shoot, um, it's going to shoot pretty well. It takes all kind of ammo, so a Glock, uh, a Glock 19 will be a great uh, first gun. Also, uh, the uh, Smith & Wesson MEP 2.0. I think that's a great gun. It's, it's heavier than the others, um, but I think it's for a starter gun, on uh, your first gun. It is a great, uh, a great uh, choice to start with. So Smith & Wesson MEP 2.0. And also, um, maybe not this one in particular, this is the M18, but the Sig Sauer, P320 is another um, another great option to start with. So those are those are three that I usually try to uh, recommend uh, to my folks. They you know but do research on the gun, figure out what you want to get, uh, figure out your purpose, whether you're going to be um, concealed carry. Um, these are great. Uh, well, I just show you great concealed carry guns. Um, if you're going to uh, get a gun for home defense, you may want to get a full size. You know, like the uh, Mechanic uh, TP9 SFX. That's a bigger gun, um, less expensive gun. So um, you, you want to get a smaller gun for concealed carry, a larger gun. Uh, we just talked about handguns here um, for uh, for concealed carry. So yeah. So just just do that research. Figure out what it is. Um, I even do a class myself where I help people come in. We'll go in. We'll shoot different types of gun figure out what type is the best for you so yep just um figure out what the best kind is figure out what your purpose is what you want to do with the gun then that way you can make a decision on what your first gun should be all right so you got your gun what do we do now um i always recommend going out and getting training not just because i'm an instructor because training is uh, important um it's just going to help you kind of hone in and and, and and get your skills up um, if you're a new shooter, you don't know anything about shooting at all, you're a beginner, take a class that caters to you. So find a class uh, that caters to beginning shooters, novices who don't know anything at all about shooting. Um, even I would even call the instructor beforehand when you find one. Um, just ask him, is this class for beginners? I don't know anything about guns or firearms at all. So find a class that caters to beginners. Um, if you're a novice shooter, a little better shooter, um, um, you've been doing some training, maybe find a class that caters to whatever your um, your weaknesses are. So kind of figure that out. Um, maybe you want to take a concealed carry class. Maybe you want to move up and take an AR or a shotgun class. So, But always um, find a class that caters to whatever it is that you're needing at that particular time. Um, and like I said before, you can even call that instructor and uh, find out ahead of time, you know, is this class for you or maybe even take one-on-one -on -one training. Maybe you need to work on uh, grip. Maybe you need to work on your presentation. Um, take classes that caters to what, what you need um, and it kind of reinforces um, your training uh, that you've been doing. And also, when you get to be quote unquote good, don't, don't stop training. <laughs> training is uh, important. You'll never know everything there is to know about firearms. So training is crucial. I'm an instructor. I still take a, cl a couple of classes a year, two, three classes a year. Um, most of the other instructors I know, they all, they'll all take classes, so um, take classes and even um, if you find an instructor you like, I still recommend taking classes from different people, kind of just to get a different uh, 
perspective on it because somebody may um, be teaching you and be teaching you well, but then somebody else may look at it from a different angle, see something different that you need to work on that you can do. So I would, um, you have a full-time instructor, that's fine. Let's say you go to four classes, maybe take three with your uh, regular instructor and, and get another one for a fourth class, but definitely no matter what you do, get some training. All right, so you got your gun, done your training. What do we do now? I recommend uh, now doing some dry fire. A lot of people don't like doing dry fire, but dry fire is a perfect way to practice, get all your practice in without using any ammo. Um, dry fire, you can work on a lot of things. You can familiarize yourself with your um, gun. Um, you can work on your grip, work on your sight alignment, sight picture, get all that worked in. Um, just do do different um, type drills um, with your gun. Um, and it, it, five, ten minutes a day, three to four, five, you know, times. You know, I do it every day. Uh, I usually try to dry fire. Uh, my goal is to do uh, ten minutes in the morning, ten minutes in the evening, three times a week. And that's good. I also recommend if you're going to do um, dry fire, um, do some external aids. Um, the Matches X10. Is a great little um, thing you can use. You just set it on your gun um, here, and then it just kind of uh, it uh, can recognize your shot patterns, and it gives you uh, tips on when, when you're shooting. Um, <clears throat> it shows up on the, on your uh, phone, and you can just tell uh, what you did. You know whether you pulled the trigger too hard, um, whether you were anticipating the shot gripping too hard. You can get all of that. Um, uh, with the Mantis X10, so that's a great uh, external aid to use. Also, uh, if you shoot an AR-15, get the, uh, the Blackbeard. You just uh, put in the mag and the um, <clears throat> uh, BCG, and it'll help you out um, with your uh, AR-15. I also would recommend getting the, if you can, for your gun, a dry fire mag. Um, and the dry fire mag, you just kind of, you know, when you're doing dry fire, you have to, you know, you point, you press the trigger, you have to rack that slide every time. So, dry fire mag just allows you to, if you insert it in, you can just kind of pull the trigger, and now you just kind of keep pulling the trigger, you don't have to rack the slide. So, anything that can help with um, dry fire. It's a great aid, um, like I said, help you familiarize yourself with the gun. And you can work on a lot of things. Um, your grip, uh, trigger control, sight alignment. Um, so dry fire is great. So um, you got your gun, did some training, go home and practice that training <laughs> with the dry fire. It makes no sense to go get the training if you're gonna go home and practice. So dry fire is important. Remember that, dry fire. All right, so got your gun doing some training, took a couple of classes, got you some dry fire in, what do you want to do now? <laughs> you want to buy some ammo <laughs> and go to the range and go shooting. Um, people will tell you what kind of uh, ammo to get, it really doesn't um, matter. Um, just get you some good ammo. Um, ammo prices have uh, come down a lot. Um, they're not at pre-pandemic prices, but they are a lot better than they were. So they're coming down, coming down slowly, but they are coming down. So you should be able to find um, plenty of uh, ammo at the um, at your gun store. Just remember when you're shooting um, with the practice, you're gonna be using your full metal jacket ammo, not your jacket of hollow points. Your jacket of hollow points are used for defensive um, uses. You do wanna shoot them out of your gun to kind of make sure they shoot right, but yeah, that's for defensive purposes so you're going to use your uh, full metal jacket um at the range so that's what you want to be um using so you're going to go to the range you're going to shoot um have a plan um go in uh, shoot with purpose don't just go there and shoot a couple of hundred uh, rounds down range and be done with it um and don't know what you how, how, how good you are um go in with the plan and figure out what you need to work on so um you may need to work on uh, getting a better grip. You may need to work on your sight alignment. Um, <clears throat> whatever it is, go to the range, um, analyze what you do, and then go home and practice it with dry fire. Come back to the range, do it again. It's a process. Dry fire 
is you can practice what you uh, need to work on and then um, when you uh, get to the range you can work on it and whatever you need help with uh, you can do that so um, that's kind of steps uh, for uh, for you know gonna get you a gun um, something that you can afford that's not too expensive um, you don't have to get the guns I recommend you can go a little cheaper uh, you may even want to get a, a, a Taurus or you know <clears throat> the other options out there I just recommend the three uh, that I like do that get training training is important you should train at least I say three four times a year uh, take a class I know they can get kind of expensive uh, 100 150 250 dollars sometimes so but you do need to get training so just train as much as you can um, afford out there so do your training and then do your drive fire to kind of um, reinforce uh, your training so take the training class to come back home get your um, get your dry fire in so just practice and the main things for new shooters and practice on is going to be your grip your stance and getting a good um, side alignment so those are the main things and then from there you're going to practice on your presentation you know when you bring that gun up you won't want to be out to be searching for your sights you want it to already be there those are the things you're going to have to learn work on and practice on so you got your training <coughs> go out to the range and reinforce those skills that you develop uh, with your dry fire go to the range with the plan um, don't start out you know shooting at 15 20 yards bring that target in five ten yards work from there um, figure out what you need to work on and then as you get better move that target back to 10 yards 15 yards whatever it is. that's a mistake I made when I first went out I was trying to shoot at 20 yards and trying to figure out why I wasn't working because I read everything so I knew what I was doing but brought it in and then I can kind of see where I was and get better so um those are the kind of things uh, um, you need to do for a new shooter hopefully <laughs> that helps some of you guys out we're doing a whole series on the new shooter thing step by step but i just want to knock this video out real quick so um do those things and hopefully you guys can get it um great any uh tips or advice for new shooters leave me in the comments below until then you guys stay safe shoot straight keep training we'll talk to you guys later if you're a believer in the second amendment Please help us spread our message and defeat these social media anti-gun algorithms. We are a small channel, but you can help our voice be heard by leaving a comment, liking the video, subscribing to the, um, to the channel, or even um, hitting the bell button to make sure you're notified when we push a video out. We're here to speak for you and make sure that your, uh, your voice is heard and that your rights are not infringed. You can also help us support the channel. There's the link below where you can go buy a fitting and tactical gear, pick you up a hat, <laughs> a shirt, you know, whatever to just kind of help uh, support the channel going forward. So until next time, stay safe, shoot straight, keep training, and carry a gun daily to keep you and your family safe. We'll talk to you guys next time.